Hari Nair. I'm very happy to be here and giving a talk about a practitioner's approach for industrial IoT. So let me just go through the agenda. So we will be having an introduction. Then we will be taking a real case study of a bottling plant case study. Thanks to our customer who allowed us to share this case study as part of this talk. We will be talking about path to industry 4.0. What are the different evaluations like industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0? What are the differences? You know, we are all talking about so many different times. So what are the differences? Then we will also talking about what are the next step towards industry 4.0. So let me start with a brief introduction about me. I am Hari Nair and I have started my career with career as an electronic warfare scientist at Defense R&D organization in Hyderabad. We were making the electronic warfare and the threat library and those kind of things long time back and be part of the deployment team in the POK border and those kind of places. Of course, that is history. Long time back, I left that place and I started into working into different industries in India and USA. And uh, I have overall 25 years of experience in the the various uh, technology managerial role. And eight years back, when we started a company called Gadgeon, we focused on end-to-end -end IoT. What is the meaning of end-to-end -end IoT? It is from the sensors to the hardware, to the connectivity, to the gateway, to the cloud, to the analytics, to the applications. Whatever Rahul Gupta was talking about, sense, make sense and act. So we work on end-to-end -end IoT because I know some of the questions were coming, who will provide the sensors? We will provide the sensors. Who will provide the connectivity? We will provide the connectivity. Who will provide the gateway? We may take a third-party gateway from Dell or from somebody else and configure and set it up for you. So we provide an end-to-end -end solutions because I know that when we talk about this kind of in implementations, one of the biggest challenge we will be facing is that if you go to a, an existing factory today, some of the machines may be brand new machines, which they talk all the latest technology, but some of the machines may be 20 years old or 30 years old machines. What are you going to do with those machines? Are you going to throw away those machines? Give me a break. We are not going to do that. We want to use that machine. How can you use that machine? Definitely, I will be delving into more details about this one. And when we started working on this IoT and IoT platforms and IoT solutions, we come across a lot of different intricacies. I will be definitely getting into some of that. This is a case study which I am going to talk about. This is a, 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 a factory where we are planning to implement a remote production monitoring facility. What is this video about? Definitely it's a bottling plant. It's wine bottling plant. What more we know about it? It's a highly mechanized automated plant. Very less labor. Well maintained and well clean. Clean room kind of facility. Why do you need anything more on top of this? Because it's a well maintained plant. But please notice here, when we contacted this particular customer, they told it's, it's a great plant, everything is good. But the plant managers don't have the visibility of, they got a work order, 
what is the current status of that work order in this plant? In every machine, if you really get into the details here, you can see there is a depalletizer. What is a depalletizer? It is a machine taking bottles and empty bottles from a pallet and putting into the into the conveyor belt. And from the from the depalletizer, we will be getting into a filler and a camper section. From the filler and camper, we will be going into drop packing mechanism machines. Then it is a case sealer, then shipping and various kinds of things which will be done. But there is no, even though individual stages are integrated and automated, but overall it is not automated. Data are not being collected. Data are being thrown out, but it is not being collected and monitored. That was the that was the case here. If you get into the what was their main objective here? They wanted to really know that a, given a work order, what is the current status of that work order in that plant? They want to know overall equipment efficiency tracking. How is their machines are performing? How can they reduce their waste tracking? How can they reduce the waste, equipment downtime, fault codes, or they have something called dissolved oxygen reading. In this kind of wine bottling plant, the oxygen level in the wine bottle is a very important parameter. If the oxygen level is higher, the shelf life of the wine will come down. So they want to know that when a bottling is done, what is the level of oxygen in that wine? So these are the very important parameters they want to collect. But they have no easy way of collecting that. They need to go to each and every local HMI, manually collect it and do it. That is not what is Industry 4.0 is. Industry 4.0 is, we are talking about collect, connecting the complete manufacturing chain. That means from supply of supply of bottles, from shipping to, to, the, to the inventory. So that means various stages, data needs to be collected, it needs to be monitored, it needs to be visualized and presented. Meaningful sense needs to be derived out of this data and presented in a, in a, in a good dashboard and make inference and react onto the systems. So what they wanted to do was raw materials versus production with the time per work order. So these are their objectives. What did we do? Typically what we do is that first we will visit that factory floor and analyze what is their data requirement. What are the different stages of their production facility? In this case you can see depalletizer, filler, labeler, drop packer, case sealer and palletizer. Now what are the different kind of parameters they want to monitor? Bottle counters outgoing from depalletizer. How many bottles are going out of depalletizer? How many are filled and capped and moving out of the filler? How many bottles are entering and exiting the labeler? How many number of are getting into the drop packing mechanisms? And how many cases are sealed? Number of pallets are being moved out of the palletizer. So these are the kind of, now if you take the case here, what are the equipments they are using? They are using MHC depal as a, de a depalletizer, filler monoblock for the filler. They have different machines. Now, how do we collect the data from here? Trust me, collecting the data is the more biggest challenges of Industry 4.0. There are platforms. There are people talks about <coughs> computing. People talks about different platforms, analysis, everything. But how do you collect the data? That is the biggest thing here. Once you have the data collected, then of course there are so many people are providing platforms to store the data, analyze the data, make sense out of the data. But data collection is one of the biggest challenge. Data collection is multiplied. The challenge of the data collection is multiplied once you have a heterogeneous uh, equipment. That means some machines are new, some machines stocks one protocol, other machines stock another protocol, some machines are old. How do you collect data from all this kind of heterogeneous machines and make sense out of that? Then of course, now when you are getting into this kind of IIoT, there is something called IT and OT. And IT guys should support OT guys. 
IT guys should not take it as a threat for their job. So now the collaboration and cooperation among various teams is an absolute requirement here actually. Now what is the next step here? The next step is going to be, we are going to visualize. That means we are going to create a digital twin. What is a digital twin? If you have a factory floor, it is having these various stages. Here we are going to make a 2D or a 3D layout of that production line and we are going to use drag and map kind of mechanism for data collection. Once you do that, you will be able to exactly view your production line. Then once you define the correct data collection points or the sensor points, then you can assign what kind of events, what kind of derived events, what is red means, what is yellow means, what is green means, all those definitions can be done. So that is what we typically do in this kind of virtualization. And one of, everybody talks about, you know, big data analysis. One of the biggest problem of big data analysis is data itself. Where is the data? Now if you go to a factory today, some of the data may be in some files in some computer or some, some registers or some books or some manual way of doing it. Where is the data? You need to collect the data first or transform the data from the existing system actually. Once this is done, the, the, the biggest, the next step is a simulation. Why the simulation is so important? We don't want anyone to invest any money before they are convinced that it is solving their pain or problem. Once we identify this is the data I want to collect, we simulate all sensors. We come up with a dashboard which is suitable for you. We demonstrate that proof of concept using a simulator and show the value which is bringing in. And of course the virtualization and simulation is an iterative loop. Because now the customer or the factory floor is not investing any money here yet. We are doing virtualization, simulation and fine tuning what kind of systems you want to develop. Once that is done, now the next biggest thing is that who will provide the sensors? That, that is one of the biggest problems. Now, in some cases, some of the equipment has the capability to push out the data. What various sensors inside the machine, because if the machines are new, maybe five years old kind of machines, they have Modbus, OPC UA, BACnet, and those kind of interfaces. Using that, they can push the data out. But if the machines are old, we will, during the analysis phase, we will identify what are the different kind of sensors you need. Is it an internal sensor, external sensor? How do you collect the data from those machines? Once that is done, we will be completing this simulation. Once the simulation is completed, we will be giving a full demo to the management and they can get convinced that, okay, this is solving their problem before they are investing in it. Moving on to the next one, this is the, the finally digitization that is remote production monitoring. You can see a, a, a production line here. This production line image can be uploaded with your real image. Now you can see that what is really happening, remote production monitoring, what is their management, improve the operational efficiency by 25% within one year. These are the kind of operational parameters they wanted to achieve. And whatever this particular case study I have shown is currently being implemented in California in one of the wine bottling plants here. Why actually I, I wanted to start off the case study is that we are not talking something in theory. We are on the field, we are on, we are on the ground and we are ready to solve this kind of problems. Of course there are challenges because when we are having a heterogeneous systems old and new machines, different kind of protocols, there are challenges. But we will work with you to really face the challenges and solve the challenges and collect the data. Once the data is collected, we will be able to do, make sense out of that data and react on that data. So now let me, let me just get back to what are the 
some of the theory behind all this industry 4.0. In the industry 4.0, we will be coming up with an a, a, a analysis, it's called an, our approach cycle. We will analyze, we will virtualize, we will simulate, and we will digitize. Then only we can start the journey of industry 4.0. We cannot say that, okay, it is like mobile revolution. Mobile penetration is very high in India without landline, of course, we were having landline in a very limited scale. Without having a full-fledged land, landline, we went in mobile. But that kind of penetration may not be so easy in Industry 4.0. You need to have a mechanism for collecting the data or digitization. As part of the digitization, the first thing is analysis. Analyze what is your data requirements. What are you trying to achieve through this data collection? Then virtualize, simulate, then digitize. Then we will be talking about various aspects of data analysis, anomaly detection, AI, deep learning, machine learning, all kinds of things. From that, we make sense out of the data, then we act on the data, or we will put back, we will complete that loop by giving the appropriate command backs to the sensors and machines. Let us start off with industry 1.0, industry 2.0, industry 3.0 and 4.0. We know that, you know, sometimes we say that the initial industrial revolution never hit India, okay? Because we are even now a lot of labor intensive workforces doing in many factories. But when we talk about at a global level, you know, this all started very long time back, it's 18th century. The first industrial revolution started with the steam engine and water based, you know, steam engine based uh, mechanized production. The second revolution started maybe 100 years later. It is more of mechanized, more of repetitive kind of production where the same assembly line can produce mass production. And the third revolution happened maybe around 1960, 1970 time frame where these computers has become more affordable and more cheaper, it got introduced into the production lines and assembly lines. And now we call it industry 4.0. What is the fundamental difference between 3.0 and 4.0? In 3.0, definitely whatever the plant which I have shown is at level 3.0. So that means it is fully mechanized, fully automated, and fully computer controlled but it is in silos, it is in different, different areas. One stage is totally integrated, totally automated, but it is not integrated with the other stage. Their integration today is with the conveyor belt. That is a physical conveyor belt, okay? Now, what we are talking about is physical cyber system. So that means we wanted to collect data or sensor data from our initial raw material collection till the customer service. Assume that if I manufactured a particular wine bottle and if a customer is saying that that wine bottle shelf life has come down less than 50 percentage of the predicted date, then I should be able to say that if from which batch this belongs, from which supplier separate this bottle, up to that level of tracking I should be able to do it. That is the beauty of industry 4.0. So that means it is not just the assembly line alone, it is from the raw material collection or ordering system till the customer support. It is everything, everything in the complete manufacturing chain is integrated and it is completely traceable. So that is the good thing. What are the technologies here? Definitely all these computers, all sensors, IoT, AI, robotics, everything is playing a major role here. As we know that you collect a lot of data without AI or without analytics or without machine learning or deep learning, can we make sense and easy sense? No. We definitely need those kind of analytics. On top of analytics, we need good visuals. You should be able to visualize the data in a meaningful way. It should create good dashboards and present the data and give the alert mechanism for the right people with either with SMS or with different kind of mechanisms. 
So moving on to the, the next slide of what is industry 3.0? Because we are all talking about 3.0. Now I have a question here. I know that some of the most advanced industry in India may be already industry 3.0. They are starting their journey to 4.0. But many of the small medium scale industries, are they really reached 3.0? That's a big question. Now, can we skip 3.0 to go to 4.0? So what are the fundamental things of 3.0? Measure, control and react. How do you measure? How do you collect? Measuring is nothing but data collection. How do you collect the data? Without collecting data, is there any point in going to industry 4.0? I don't think it makes sense. Because you, you don't know what you need to work on. You definitely need to collect the data. So once you collected the data, you measure the various parameters, then definitely you can control it. So controlling means it's like a loopback control. Assume that one particular assembly line, one machine is not producing the way it's supposed to produce. So to avoid the next machine to get chalked, you can control the speed automatically. That is what control means. Now react. What is react means? Based on the analysis which you have done on that particular, particular HMI or particular line, you can react or you can either increase or decrease the input or output based on the based on the current situation there. If you wanted to, when you get into 3.0, there are some fundamental technologies you need. What are those technologies? First thing is there should be some mechanism for asset visibility. What are the assets here? It could be equipment, it could be raw materials, it could be different kind of machines which is used, machines or raw materials used in that factory floor. Next is process visibility. You need to have some kind of mechanism to get an overview about the process visibility. Next is the error proofing. If there is some error happens, how do you ensure that kind of error proofing can be done? And second is reactive controls. You should have support for proper PLCs or proper SCADA systems with the relay controls and those kind of things in place, then only we will be able to react on some of the situations. So we assume that if we want to do, to get into real benefit of industry 4.0, you need to have this kind of infrastructure. Is Indian industry ready for this? Some may be, some may have to make an investment towards that. And now the question comes, is the senior managers of the factories are convinced to make that kind of investment? That, that, is, that is a big, bigger question to be answered. Once they are convinced, definitely things can change. Now another question will come, is their existing workforce is in a position to implement this kind of systems? That is also another question come, coming there. So there are, there are opportunities, there are benefits. And now today we are competing against the, it is not competing only in India, competing globally. So definitely we have no choice other than to get there. The, the, the faster we can get there, it will be better off for us actually. Now we can see here, as we are talking about where to industry 4.0 is, start small. You start with one production line. Let us not go with full factory. Let us start with one production line. Maybe one particular stage of that production line. Saying that, how can I start with a small? Then what is next? All the tools what we are planning to use, it should be forward looking tools. Whatever tools for the asset visibility or process visibility, when you want to get into 4.0, the same tool can be used so that you do not throw out that tool. And the third thing is collaborative. Because the OT guys and IT guys should support each other. Because if you go to many factories, I'm telling you in my in the, the bottling plant which I was talking about, to get some data from IT department was so painful. 
So that is the practical difficulties actually, you know. Theory you can talk, everything is great. We can say that collect the data, but how do you collect the data? When you get into the reality, things are different. So we definitely need a very co under the senior management is, is, is so strong, that kind of support will not come. Because every department has their own head. Because IT guys is threatened sometimes. Are they going to lose their job? So those kind of questions will come. So definitely it should be very collaborative. Then it will be, it should be at a very supportive, because supportive with senior management. And it should be, if you want to really implement across the complete factory or complete company, definitely it needs to be move, moved into very, very collaborative, supportive and cooperative way. Then only we should be able to do that. So now, what I was trying to say till now is that basically what is industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and can we skip 3.0 to get into 4.0? That is going to be a lot of challenges. Okay. Definitely, we need to have a mechanism to measure, control, and react. If you have that kind of mechanism in place, then you can talk about 4.0. Otherwise, we will be only talking. We may not be able to really implement and get any benefit out of that. There are, there are many companies doing, you know, they claim that they do end-to-end -end IoT, end-to-end -end IIoT. But what is Gadgeon can offer, I will spend a few minutes on that. Say, the conclusion slide on this, don't get lost in the hype, focus on industry 3.0 and introduce tools that are already available. That is where you can talk about the Gartner report, Gartner's hype chart, they are talking about there is a innovation trigger, peak of inflated expectations, thought of dissolution line, flop of enlightenment. You can see that when you start the journey of IIoT, don't expect everything will happen tomorrow. And after some time you may be disillusioned, saying that, oh, I invested so much, I am not getting anything. So definitely, you know, it will pass through this kind of hype cycle. So the, the bottom line is that focus on 3.0, implement forward-looking tools, invest in that so that we can get to 4.0 maybe after a couple of years. What is Gadgeon's offering? Gadgeon has a platform called Delphion. And Delphion is the platform we have used for that particular bottling plant. This platform is built on top of AWS and Azure kind of cloud platforms. In this platform, what we will be doing is that we will be collecting the data, and we will be analyzing it, we will be virtualizing it, we will be simulating it, then we will be really implementing it. As part of that one, you can see it's a rapid IoT platform development where it can be used to a remote production monitoring, improve quality, reduce machine downtown, and increase throughput. You can see what are the machines it will get connected, what are the applications it can. It can also get connected, with, integrated with the CRM, CRM systems and ERP systems and those kind of traditionally available systems in the factories. Then Edge is an Edge gateway. And that gateway is a, a gateway, it could be from Dell EMC or it could be from any other third party gateway. But where we will be running a software which is specifically meant for this kind of applications. Dell Cloud, suppose if some factory has their own cloud, we can put it there. It could be Amazon Cloud or it could be Microsoft Cloud or IBM Cloud, wherever it is, we can, we can put it there. So in this particular kind of Delphion, we will be doing the analysis, virtualize, simulate, and digitize. This is, a, this is a demo which we are exhibiting outside this conference room. Here you can see that there is a Dell Edge. Dell Edge is the, is the Edge gateway. You can see, you know, PLC, OPC, UN. Those, those, some of the PLC may be the traditional PLC which is supporting Modbus TCP. Some of the PLC may be OPC UI. OPC UI is a new protocol which is coming up into the industry. 
So now that PLC is connected to the different machines in the factory floor. And I assume that majority of the factory floors will have some version of PLCs. If there is no version of PLC, we have another way of collecting called Dell I.O. module. Dell I.O. module has eight analog I.O. module, I.O. input inputs, eight digital I.O. inputs, then relays. So in that way, wherever the PLCs are supported, we can use the PLC path. Wherever the legacy machines, that's what I was talking about. We care about legacy machines. When you want to connect with the legacy machines, we use this path. Once these two things are covered, we also support a hard protocol. Hard protocol is a, a wireless serial based protocol, which is wireless hard. Those kind of machines also can be connected using this Dell Edge. Once this is done, you can see there is a local HMI. You know that we cannot run everything from cloud in a factory floor. When technicians are working on the assembly line, they need to have a local HMI to look what is going on there. So we have a local HMI and we also have a cloud version. So cloud version can be used by the managers and the product line managers and the management team. But the local HMI will be used by the technicians who is on the floor. The demo of the same thing can be seen there. We have put the real hardware, real sensors, so that we can get a feel about how exactly it is being done. You can see here, what are we doing here? Collect production data acquisition from the factory, collect, transform, and transmit. This is what exactly Delphion is doing. So you can see that production data acquisition from the factory pulls data from any machines or PLCs or OPC servers on the factory network. And now, if we, if we are starting engaging, we need to have that analysis phase first. So that we come to your factory floor, understand the plant, understand this kind of things, how do we really collect it? Then automates collection of production data from MES, historians, quality system here. You also will have some data in some form there. It could be some files in some computer or maybe in a different systems. We will also collect data from those kind of sources. Then we will be transforming data conditioning into useful information. That is based on the data analysis part we will be doing. Then we will be transmitting this data in a secure way. So that this data can be viewed, visualized by the different dashboards by the senior management. And we can also do this at a different level, at a factory floor level, plant level, corporate level, at multiple levels we can do things. In this Delphion, there are majority of the components are reusable components. Now, if you really go to this kind of systems, there are many bigger guys like Siemens, ABB, and uh, GE, and all those people, they have equivalent systems or better systems. But their costing is going to be quite heavy. It may be in millions of dollars for one installation. This particular model, majority of the components are reusable components. And in that way, we will be able to to, to, our licensing models are more targeted for Indian SMEs market so that it is in a, in a it is not cheap but it's a very cost effective. So in that way we will be working, we will be willing to work with the Indian SMEs in that way so that it can be a win-win mode for graduate as well as the small and medium scale industries. And how are we achieving that? It is really achieved by so many reusable components. Only the very minimal customization need to be done based on your dashboard customizations and more of data analytics portion of customization. All other things are reusable. I also would like to thank a few of the references which I have used extensively. Gadgeon's customer who allowed us to show that uh, particular uh, case study. Industry 4.0 webinar by Adrian Jenkins. That is one other site. Many sources from internet, you know. It is not I have created everything, I put it in the right way, but some of the sources are from internet. And Gartner Hype Cyclone Technology, as well as uh, 
AMA KPMG Industry 4.0 report recently released in March 2018. I think I'm running out of my time. Last session is the question and answer. If you have any questions, I can take two or three questions. Actually, uh, definitely this system, uh, even though our preference is to do the automated data collection, but we are giving some provision for manual entry of data collection specifically targeted for Indian industries. So definitely we should be able to have an offline discussion and take it forward. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? some kind of interfaces. Typically, it has some serial port or Ethernet port where we can access the data using Modbus or Backlight or uh, those kind of product ports. If that kind of data is available, definitely we can easily collect it. If that is not there, can we get some analog line or digital line coming out of that machines? We can collect. If that is not there, we may have to put some kind of external sensors to collect the data. So that will be based on case by case it varies. That is the reason I was spending a lot of time on that analysis phase. Because everybody's case is different. Your machines are different. We need to interact with you, understand that kind of machines, and definitely we should be able to engage. Yes, presently we are able to extend this data but, uh, locally. We are not sending it to the cloud. Oh, then, then it is easy. If you are able to collect the data, our Dell Edge and Dell IO module, those kind of modules can help you to push the data out. Definitely we can do that. Collecting the data is one part. We want to access the machine, remote access. We can do that. That is also possible to upgrade the PLC and uh, to upgrade the firmwares. Absolutely. Say so now the Dell Edge, uh, Dell Edge, uh, Edge Gateway can facilitate that kind of operations. So uh, does uh, it have uh, some kind of a storage capacity or? Uh, yeah, it has, you know, say now we cannot always uh, uh, believe on connectivity from the edge gateway to the cloud. So we have one week of storage. So one now week. one week of storage because what we do is that is just to cater for uh, breakage in network connectivity. Our main storage is in the, in the cloud. But if you want to have a higher capacity on the data storage on the Dell Edge, definitely we can take a more powerful Edge gateway from Dell EMC or somewhere else and we can configure it for you. And what is the frequency of uh, putting the data from that device? Uh, frequent, that is, that is defined. That is based on your use case. You want to read it in once in a day, once in a minute, once in 10 milliseconds. That based on what is your real application. We have the configurability for that. Okay, so two-way communication is possible. Absolutely. My name is Chandrakan. Uh, I am from a liquor industry. Uh, my question to you is, why you have said that the biggest challenge in industry 4.0 platform is to collect data. 
and uh, in case uh, some manual intervention is involved in collection of this data, do you still call it uh, on an industrial 4.0 platform or uh, it is not industrial 4.0? Say, you know, let's not talk theory, because in you know, theory, you know, we can say both the answers. But practically, why are we providing, uh, ideally speaking, we should automatically collect the data. That is the right way. But I, we know that Indian SME is a very heavily labor-intensive factory. So now, if you are making a platform to India, which is not allowing this kind of manual intervention, the success rate will be less, actually, okay? So in that way, we are giving an option to manually enter it, even though our preference is automatic data collection. Definitely, we can we can talk on this one and we can see how we can take it forward. Our platform allows that kind of things. Okay, so thank you so much for everybody for your patience and your attention. Thank you.